Welcome to the Coop Tank Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Cooper, coming to you from Sweet Recording in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. You know, people, if you have a video cast, a podcast, a book on tape, or hell, even if you need a studio built, Sweet Recording is the place for you. Joe Gangemi not only knows his stuff, but he's honest and he's a great guy. So check them out at their website, Sweet Recording, S U I T E, recording.com, or email them at hello at sweetrecording.com. Anyway, second, second episode of uh, The Roundtable. We have a great show today. And I got to tell you, when I was coming over, I noticed this in South Jersey. And this is just something that happened driving it right now. In South Jersey, we have the longest, longest yellow lights. I have. I always don't know if I should stop, but I, I always sit there and I stop and I feel like an asshole because it's still yellow. So anyway, that's just so when you're out. If you notice that, you can email me at thecooptank at yahoo.com and tell me you noticed that. Uh, anyway, so we have a great show. We have a friend of mine. She's uh, actually came to see both of my comedy shows, so I can call her a fan. I can call her a fan, and she's a great marketer from First Impressions Marketing. It's Nancy Sapira. How you doing, Nancy? Thank you. I am a big fan of yours. Yes. Well, there, there you go. I am. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying watching you do stand-up. Good. And our next guest, uh, well, if, if you're in Gloucester County, and that's the Chamber of Commerce down there, he is the... I believe the three time depending pie eating champion. He's a he's the king of pies in the Gloucester County uh, Chamber of Commerce. And from N E N E M R Total H R, it's Mid Mariani. How you doing, Mid? Good. I'm doing great. Good. Good to be here. Nice and finally, you. finally, a gentleman who has a podcast that's recorded in the studio called Millennial Outliners, Outliers, and he's also the uh, managing partner at Risk Reduction Plus Group. It's Tyler Ardron. How you doing, Tyler? Doing awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Now, I want, I want to start off by you telling us what you all do. I'll go around the room and tell us what you do. And then we're going to get into a whole conversation of, you know, coming out of the pandemic, networking, everything that's, you know, really geared your business. So, Nancy, first impressions marketing. Well, we know it's marketing, but what do you do and, and what makes you different than other people? Because there's a lot of marketers out there. There's a lot of marketers out there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I would say that what we do that's a little bit different, we're... Uh, we're really good at reaching out to moms uh, and women. And as you know, women buy about, oh my goodness, probably 90% of all the stuff that's out there. So uh, we're really good at um, getting butts in seats, selling tickets. Uh, we've just kind of figured out the formula on how to make that work. So that really is the niche. And then the other thing we do really well, uh, we do strategic planning. So we you know, put the blueprint down and, and show people how they should be doing their marketing so they're not guessing and then getting really pissed off when it doesn't work. Be and, and mid, okay, mid, now, any, now, once again, a lot of HR companies, you know, we run into them at events, you see them. What makes you, what makes you guys different? What makes NEMR total HR different? Well, we're, we're, we're a comprehensive outsourced HR company. Uh, so what we do is all the functions that normally like a fortune 500 company would do internally, the, you know, the recruiting, the benefits, the payroll, we take that all off the plates of our small, medium-sized clients, but we do it in a very, you know, hands-on fashion, and this way they can focus just on their, their core business. So we usually save them some money, and we definitely give them a higher level, you know, of uh, service than, than they could do on their own, so... And now, Tyler, you're in risk reduction. So you're you're in a, a specific type of insurance. But explain, you know, because I don't think you have a lot of competition. I'm not sure. But you have specifically, you're involved in it. Tell me exactly what makes you different and what you do. Yeah, yeah. So um, we, uh, I own an insurance brokerage. We specialize in flood insurance. Um, I have a, a flood background. My parent company um, is a, a flood mitigation manufacturer. Um, so there are things that you put on buildings that lower the risk, and they also lower uh, insurance, flood insurance. So we opened up a insurance agency um, specializing in flood insurance. Now we do all lines of insurance, um, but that our real niche is flood insurance, and we're doing that on a na national um, scale. Okay, so I know all you from networking, and we 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 run into each other all the time. And I want to talk about LinkedIn because everyone has a different LinkedIn profile. Okay, you see sometimes people to me, over post and they over like, I don't know if you ever see that one, you know, you notice when someone likes like every person's 
you know, posts. And I think there's supporting and then there's over liking. And for me, I do need to get better. I'm sort of a prick. I don't, I don't like a lot. I need to like a lot, but I want to ask Tyler, we'll start with you because you know, you post a lot of good stuff. You post the pictures from the, 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 the presentations you give, but how important to you is LinkedIn and what, why do you post the way you post? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's critical in business now. So social media and LinkedIn, you know, specifically, um, it's, uh, as you know, Coop, I do a ton of networking. Um, and I can only be with so many people at a time, you know, I, I try to do as best as I can, as you probably see on my LinkedIn, I'm with, you know, a ton of people every day. Um, but uh, because I'm with so many different people, I had to stay in front of the people that I'm not with, you know, so um, LinkedIn is a great platform, Facebook, Instagram, all of them really, but they're great platforms to stay in front of your network, um, stay in front of potential referral sources. Um, I do it strategically um, in that, you know, like you said, I'm posting pictures of presentations I'm doing. I'm, you know, showing that I'm an expert in my field um, and, you know, it, it just attracts people a, a lot to me um, rather than me say having to make calls all the time or stuff like that. Um, and it's just, like I said, just another way to stay in front of people and, and, uh, have them, you know, kind of see what I'm doing. Um, every time I go out to a new event and see that person that maybe I haven't seen in a month, it's like, they see, seen me, you know, every week because they're oh man, you're all over the place. You were here, you were there. Like they know where I'm at because they're following me. Um, which is, a, you know, another good sign that, that I'm getting in front of them. Um, and I, you know, I do it. Uh, like I said, strategically in that, like I just got back from a conference in DC this past week for the National Flood Conference. All the people that I met, I go down the LinkedIn, you know, connect with them, shoot them a message. Hey, it was awesome meeting you. Um, now they start getting trickling in and start seeing, you know, what I'm putting out there. Um, and again, it's, you know, there's those are the types of people that I won't see again for probably a year because they're all across the country. Um, but it, I'm staying in front of them. They're seeing my stuff, comment and like, and I'm liking their stuff. And then when I do see them next, you know, next year at that conference, it's so much easier. It's like, you know, me and you talking, Coop, it's, it, instead of kind of that weird, awkward, like, oh, how has this last year been? Like a whole year's, you know, <laughs> a ton of time. So. Right. I know now Nancy, I know you you post a lot of articles. I've seen you. I you post a lot of insight. Because I think marketing, you know, you I've seen you, you post trends and stuff like that. How do you utilize LinkedIn? And you did post a picture of our comedy show. So I thank you for that. I felt like a big shot. Um no, but how how, how do you pick what you choose to post? Okay. I, I start I use it a little bit different than than Tyler does. I, I use it more for um credibility. Because a lot of times, I, you know, we get a lot of referrals and sometimes people, they have, they don't know who I am. So they want to, so I would say people tend to go to LinkedIn before they even look at our website. So I make sure that there's lots of recommendations, um, lots of postings. Yes, you're right. There's lots of articles, you know, just um, kind of positioning, positioning us as an expert. Um, and what I really like about LinkedIn is you could post multiple times a week. I mean, if I emailed you, five times a week or called you five times a week, you would block me and never want to talk to me again, but you can do it on LinkedIn and it's totally acceptable. So uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good place. I say it's like the Facebook for, for businesses. I mean, this, that's where you need to be. Okay. And mid, I know mid, you, you do do a balance. Like I know you had a, uh, cigar <laughs> night or a whiskey tasting the other night. Uh, thanks for the invite, but I'm joking. I don't smoke cigars, <laughs> but uh, no, you do that. But then you also do some fun stuff. Like when you ate pies, you know, I still that fascinates me how many pies you can eat, but why, how do you find the balance? Cause you seem to do both person like fun stuff, but then insightful stuff. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's not easy. I'm no expert at it. I just, you know, I follow guys like Tyler's lead and I just try to uh, post what I can and, very often I forget I'm at an event. I forget to take pictures and I rely on everybody. You might see, I steal other people's pictures half the time. Cause I'm like, I didn't take one picture, but, um, but to, to your point, I mean, I, 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 I uh, try to kind of balance it. Like, you know, like you ask the other guys, what do you use it, use it for? Well, yeah, I use it for prospecting. So I'm looking up people who I should call them a certain company but I'm also using it to support my friends, to show them that I'm supporting them, either by liking and commenting or sometimes by taking pictures with them and posting it. Because I know, especially people that aren't very active on LinkedIn, it, it might give them a little bit of a boost. And, and uh, 
you know, so I just, and then the fun things. So a lot of times I want to post more business stuff, but it's the fun things that's actually getting more traction. You know, I mean, I, sometimes it drives me crazy. That that's what's getting all the, all the views and the likes and all that stuff, but that's the, that's the nature of it. And so that's the advertising, I guess, piece of it, the promotional piece of it. So, now, now, what are you, what are your guys' opinions on religion and politics and LinkedIn. My my feeling is for LinkedIn is I don't I don't think you should mix it. And I, I don't I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're you know Jewish. I don't care if you're Catholic. I do care if you don't like goldfish crackers. If you don't like goldfish crackers, I don't <laughs> trust you. I think I think you're full of shit. I won't I won't talk to you. But what are, what are your thoughts, like Tyler? You what what are your thoughts on religion and politics on LinkedIn? Because I think sometimes it can deter business. I I think you know if someone sits there, you know. I'm open-minded, but there's a lot of people aren't. We're in a very divided country. And so people might go, well, I'm not going to work with, you know, this person. Because that. What, what is your thought about posting things on that? And do you respond to them or do you just sit there and scroll by it? Yeah. Um, and I, I'll say this for all social media platforms too. Uh, I don't do, I don't engage in either um, politics or, or religion. Um, I actually was listening to something uh, the other day, maybe it was last week or something, but uh, they were talking about, you know, I'm sure everybody's hearing about the whole Bud Light thing. Um, and they just said, you know, in marketing, there's like, there's few things that you can't really put a stance on, um, you know, and that's that religion, that's that uh, politics and, and everything like that, which kind of that Bud Light thing falls a little bit under politics. Um, because what you're doing is you're cutting off 50% of your, you know, potential client base. So I don't even engage in that at all. Um, and when I see it, uh, I don't, I just scroll past it. I'm not, you know, liking or commenting on it. Um, and because I know for me, if it's something that I don't, um, if I'm on the other side of, of whatever that person's saying, I look at it and it like kind of makes me upset. I don't comment or like it, but I know, so I know if I'm feeling that way and if say I were to start posting my views and everything, people are going to see that and be like, oh, Tyler's all about this. And, you know, they're going to have opposite views. And that could affect our relationship. Um, so I stay away from that stuff. <laughs> How about you, Nancy? Because once again, you're also in marketing. So this is something that this is a twofold question for you because you have to worry about what you do and you have to worry about you may have to guide clients out of it if that may come up. But what's your view on religion and politics on I say but mostly LinkedIn because I think Facebook, it's gonna it's gonna happen. Facebook, I don't try to get business. A lot of people are more social on Facebook. But for LinkedIn, what as a business yeah. owner and as a personal side, what do you what's your shot? Uh, I I just think that if you're there to network and to expand your uh, your connections, I don't I think it's a bad move to be talking about religion and and politics, especially now um, with things like you said so sensitive, so polarized. I. I I don't recommend it to clients. I don't do it myself. Um, and I agree. There's things I'm, I read on LinkedIn and I think to myself, wow, that guy's kind of an asshole. I, I read, but I, I wouldn't post it, you know, but I think it to myself and, and that person has now just made an impression on me that they probably didn't mean to, you know? Yep. How about you, Mid? How about you? What's your, what's your take? My, my take is like, it's not for me to post that kind of stuff, but if that's if that's who you want to be, like you said, Tyler, you might you might alienate fifty percent, but if that other fifty percent is going to do business with you, because we've seen it happen, you don't need a hundred percent. You need a very you need a bigger portion of a small. So I guess what I'm saying is, for some people, maybe that's the way to go. It's again, it's not for me. It's not for my company, but there there have been people that do very well being provocative like that so so uh that's my opinion true. that's very true yeah i mean yeah. it's 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 like anything people can some people if it's a comedian if they're political they can get a certain crowd i personally if i perform i do i don't do any political material anyway because i don't i'm straight down the middle i have views on both sides but i i think you don't people if people pay money to see me perform i don't want to sit there and alienate half those people because it's like you just you got out of it. You got a babysitter. You paid money. You came to the show. Now I'm going to spout something. You're going to be like, oh man, hey, we hate this guy. And so it's just one of those things. I mean, now, have you ever been to an event, any of you, and you can raise your hand to answer, because I'm not going to call. Have you guys ever been to an event where you've been stuck in, in a 
conversation with someone who started going political on you and you didn't know. Okay, Nancy, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, more times than I can count. Well, you know, I mean, we were on a, a group, a networking group online all during COVID, right? And, um, you know, we had to dance around a lot of, you know, you said the word mask and people were had very strong opinions about it. And I know that there were people it just in our group that didn't like other people because they were wearing a mask or not wearing a mask or their opinions. It's yeah, just stay away from it. How about you, Tyler? I mean, have you been to a group where you sit there and, you know, cause we all get to, we all get to events where someone's just talking and you're stuck and they're talking and you're like, Holy crap. And, and you, you don't want to be rude because it's not we're there to network. But when someone starts spouting some views, you're like, oh, oh God, I, I, this is even worse. What what's what was one of your experiences, Tyler? Oh, man. Yeah, it actually uh, it, it happened in one of my events uh, about six months ago. But it, it was easier for me to get get out of that just because it was my event. And I was just like, oh, wait, I got to go. You know, I got to work the room and say hi to everybody and thank them for coming. <laughs> so it was easy to kind of pull away from that but it's it's happened numerous times um so it depends on the where i'm at right like um if i'm at a, maybe a jersey man event or something like that and i'm kind of stuck in that conversation um i kind of just like <laughs> i guess glaze over and i and just uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> and yeah, then just kind of like on. Yeah. yeah smile and then just kind of like walk off or whatever but a, a, another one i what when you went over this cube it made me think i went to a uh a because I know you're a music guy, a uh, Pink Floyd concert. And um, he, sp <laughs> he spent about like 30 minutes going over like all his political views and everything. And I was just like, it turned me so off to like, just that whole experience. And I was like, you know, it kind of ruined it a little bit, because it was like literally 30 minutes of like him going over stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just kind of like ruined the night. Rough. How about you, Mid? Because we're both Springsteen fans. Springsteen gets a little political, but he but he mixes it up. He's he's not like Rod. You know the uh, Roger Waters will sit there and talk and talk. Springsteen mixes it up, but that's just Springsteen. But what have you ever? What's have you ever been to an event where someone has sat there and just talked your off? And I don't care if I don't I don't know what your political affiliation yeah. is. I don't care if it's a liberal or a conservative talking to you because they're both hardcore and hard right. Hard right. left and hard right are, are pretty much the same. They're just a different hat. What I mean has there have it happened to you where you sit there and go? holy shit i just wanted to come out maybe get a few business cards have a drink and now i'm sitting on here on like news network well i could tell you <laughs> this is another little twist i love poking people <laughs> i used to I, I i've curved it now in the last few years but i used to purposely bring up stuff and get people frantic and get them upset and, and i said you know what I think that's funny. My wife would always say, you know, not everyone thinks that's funny. <laughs> so, so I would, I'd be like, oh, maybe I should start to, um, to curb that, you know, like, but, but I would always like, uh, what's it like kick the hornet's nest with people that I knew had strong opinions and I would love it. Like, so, you know, and I, on both sides, I would do it, but uh, I've learned to, to curb it. Uh, and how do I extricate myself from those conversations? I'd probably just say, hey, I'm sorry for even bringing it up or because I'm usually the one bringing it up. <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, you know, even at family things, we've gotten to points where people have like stormed out of the house. <laughs> oh my God. I just love the controversy. I love it. <laughs> so, not surprised. I want, I want to ask, because we're all, we have Nancy, who's a woman. We mm -hmm. have Mid, who's older. We have uh, like me and we have Tyler, who I guess you're a millennial. Yeah, you're a millennial because you have the like, podcast, Millennial. What is it like for millennials? Now that you offended everybody. I don't care. <laughs> no, but you, no, that's not offending me. I wasn't offended little, by the no. way. Well, all right, I'm older. That offends me. Well, I'm older too, so <laughs> shut up, man. Now, now, Tyler, I want to know, what is it like in networking being a millennial? Because what I've learned is I think I'm a little bit different where I know I can learn from young people. Okay, I know that you guys know stuff I don't know. And I don't have a problem, but I know a lot of people my age don't think they can learn from young people because they got a stick shoved up their ass and they're like, oh, I've been doing this forever. But what is it like for when you go to an event, being a millennial, when you go into a room with older people, what is it like being a millennial? Because sometimes I don't think people take you as serious, but you're a guy who's, I think you're 32. 
you're, yep. or thir- yeah, you you have you have two or three kids. You have yep. a, a great job. I mean, you're someone who's doing better than I was doing. I'm at 32. I was like touring the country, doing comedy, like getting drunk every night. And you're doing a lot better <laughs> than I am. So you actually are like an old soul. I mean, when you think about, it, you have that life. What is it like though when you go in and, and does it sometimes piss you off if someone doesn't take you serious? Yeah, I mean, um, to, I was literally going to say what you just said, Coop, in that I'm an old soul. Um, and you know, I, I had a, my first son very young. Um, so I, you know, been in the industry for, I opened my company in 2014. And before that I was working full-time at a bank, um, two years prior. So I've been working like full-time since I was 18, going to school, um, at night and everything to get my degree. Um, so, but being in those like environments where I'm working full-time as an 18 year old and stuff, like I was always with older people. So, um, I guess, and now doing it so long, it's just, I don't, to be honest, I don't even think, think about that. And I guess maybe because I'm thinking about now because you asked it, (laughs) but maybe because like when I'm going in places to kind of go back to what you were saying, like how you, you know, can learn from younger people. I always look like I, I always think that I can learn from anybody, whether it's older, younger, whatever, like I'm good at asking questions um, because I'm, actually like interested in whatever it is. Um, and I kind of try to find that common ground, uh, whether it's, you know, golf or whether it's, um, re- investing in real estate or whatever. Um, and then I just kind of like ask questions around that. And, um, like that's everything that I've done. And, uh, to, to this date is because like, I've talked to somebody and saw that it was possible, whether it's, you know, rental properties, opening a company, you know, whatever I've done, like, it's because I've talked to someone about it and, and asked them questions and, and, you know, ask multiple people questions. So um, I think it's just, I, I don't go in like arrogant or anything like that. And, um, and I've just always been, you know, I've always been that way. Well, what you can learn from old people, I'll tell you this is when you go to events is what's the best blood pressure medicine? Because that's what like <laughs> me and my friends talk about when we hang out. We're like, I'm on lisinopril. I'll add so that to my question. How many milligrams? How many milligrams? <laughs> uh, Nancy, how about for you? Because, you know, you're a, a female business owner and I don't care. And I've, I've said this before. I may have said this last week. I don't care what year it is. Some people just don't take women seriously. I look at it, you know, from when I did comedy women comics were comics i never had that thing but what is it like for you sometimes when you go to an event and some and what do you do if someone is and you know i mean because yeah, people are instinctual if you know someone's dismissing you because oh you know she's a woman unfortunately as i said people still think like that how do you handle that in an event oh my goodness so i started my business when i was 24 so i've been networking for like a long decades yeah and so uh I don't find that they dismiss you as much as it's more inappropriate comments, inappropriate touching. I, I mean, I you just wouldn't believe the things that people have said. Give give me an example. Of something someone said because that that always fascinates people. Tell me you people tell you how nice you look, and they say it. It's just not professional, you know. People will they'll they'll be like, "Oh wow, you look really nice." Oh wow, and and they're like, "Oh, we're at a business event. <laughs> treat me like you treat the guy next to you," you know, and it's um. Yeah, keeping their hands on your shoulder a little too long or other places. It's it's you just I like to say, unfortunately, you get used to it, but it it really it it's hard to get used to. I can it, imagine it that. never gets easy. It never gets easy. I mean, I'd like to say that as I've gotten older, um, they don't bother me as much. So that's kind of nice. But you know what? As soon as I say that, another one comes around and and there are, I mean, there were events. That I remember going to back when I belonged to like the Cherry Hill Chamber of Commerce and stuff. And there were there were guys that all of the women knew, don't even go near them. Don't go near them. They're just completely inappropriate and handsy. And, you know, and you just and we all knew it. And you just kind of steer clear and make fun of them. <laughs> yeah, it must be crazy because I know when I walked down the street, women just chased me. So <laughs> I, I know what it's like. But uh, so mid for you, like mid, when you go to events, you're you're older like me, but you're like mid's like the nicest guy. Like if you no one ever says some people like no one says you know, oh God, mid's a prick. Like everyone likes mid and, and it's true. But for you, when you go to events, like how do you how do you navigate when you go into an event with 24 year olds? You know, because once again, we come from a different generation. I mean, how do you navigate that? You know, cause you don't want to look like, you know, a doofus, but you, you don't want to look like you're trying to be too hip. Like, how do you navigate that? I think I just own it. Like I, I am who I am. You know, I'm always, like you said, I'm I'm always learning from these guys. So- Maybe that comes across like I don't, I'm not perceiving them as 
too young. I mean, I know they're a lot younger than me. And I, I joke all the time, I'm older or the same age as most of their fathers. So, uh, but I'm always learning something from them. So maybe because I'm going into it that way, um, you know, it, I don't feel that way, but, but again, I don't, you know, I don't try to dress a part. That's not me. I have my style and that's the way it is. I'm, I, you know, I, I talk to them where they grew up because, and Tyler knows, cause he's heard me say it probably a thousand times, but I usually can make some kind of common connection from if they're from South Jersey, and, but I enjoy that. So it's not, I'm not being insincere. I enjoy finding out where someone's from. So I guess I don't think about it. So I don't think they think about it. maybe they do. And 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 the parts where I feel like I'm old, I own it. I talk about it. So me so and you will be going to events in walkers in 20 years, man. We'll be sitting there with the walkers. Well, It'll be great. Tyler made fun of me when I wore my like new balance sneakers. <laughs> I said, I said, are these cool or more like a mall walker? He said, more of a mall walker. I thought you had something wrong with me. He said, I think I think you had some kind of orthopedic problem. <laughs> Now, I want to ask, because you talked about learning, and in in the last few years, what is, I'm going to start with you, Nancy, what is one of the most important things you've learned from somebody, like someone has given you insight or, or, or a, uh, you know, advice, what do you think, especially since we've come out of the pandemic, because I went to a concert last week, and my wife turned to me, and we said, this is like... It, we're out of the pandemic, you know, because for a while it was back and forth. We were going, we went to see John Wade in Millville and it was, uh, everyone was just chill. Everyone was just cool. You know, if you go to Millville though, a lot of people wear tank tops on a Saturday night to a concert. I don't, I don't believe in that, but what is something, but now that we've been out of the pandemic, what is one of the most important things you've learned and who did it come from Nancy? Uh, you know, I don't know if you know who, uh, Stacy Linderman is, Do you know, yeah. she's, a, a, a she's your neighbor. She told me I had a coffee with her. my neighbor. Yes, we, we've we been neighbors for years and years and didn't know it until we met at an event. It's really kind of funny. So, but we've gotten to be fast friends. Um, I She's given me some advice. Um, you know, it's just interesting. Like, you know, she's a CFO. I'm a creative person. So we really think on, use completely different sides of our brain. And it's very interesting just to hear, we'll have a conversation and she just looks at it very differently. And, and really just comparing, I like to talk with other business owners and just see what their processes look like, what they're doing, you know, um, who who's in their inner circle, you know, that they're using for advisors. And I, I never get tired of talking to people about that because sometimes you can walk away with some really good connections. And she, yeah, she's introduced me to some really great people that have turned into clients and and vice versa. I mean, I, I think you just never know what someone else is going to say to you. You know, you think you've been in business. I've been in business 29 years and I don't know it all. I don't proclaim to. And sometimes you can get some really good advice from people and just having a conversation. How about you, Mid? Who's someone who's taught you something in the last, since the pandemic? Because we, we really all came out new. And I think relationships during the pandemic, everyone got a lot tighter, I think. I wasn't I wasn't around. I was only in the beginning here in networking because I've been back six years. So I missed out on a lot of the, the networking you may talk about. But then we went into the pandemic and relationships were formed and bonded because, as you said, Nancy, you know, the groups were in their breakout rooms. So you're talking to someone for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You're really getting an insight and people are doing one-on-ones. But for you, Mid, since the pandemic, who is someone who's who's put it, made an impact on you with some advice or something? Well, I don't, I don't know if there's any one specific person, but from the pandemic, and you had touched on earlier about posting some more fun things. And, and, and again, I don't I don't post a lot of like personal stuff, but other than business related things, posting, posting, um, you know, the pie eating, you know, that's about as vulnerable as I get on on social media. I'm not. But the pie eating was pictures with the pie all over my face and um but uh, just some of those fun things, just to just to keep it a little bit interesting, you know, on social media. But um, that's it. Before the pandemic, I have years of great, great advice that I've received. But but that's just something in the last couple of years. How about you, Tyler? Yeah, I, um, I joined a coaching community during COVID, um, which many of, of you probably have heard with Devin Denofa Harvest. Um, so I've been learning a ton from that. That's really, 
you know, to mid's what uh, point with the social media, that's really during COVID is really when I kicked up social media. Um, pre COVID, I did a little bit of social media. And then, you know, even like two years before that, when I first opened up, I barely did any social media. So um, I learned a ton, you know, through that. Uh, also, um, this year, I just finished a program by Goldman Sachs uh, called the 10k small business um, program. Um, learned a ton from that from process standpoint of the business, um, you know, looking deeper into the financials of my business um, and, and different things like that. Um, so I'm always trying to do stuff, you know, to, to help educate uh, myself. I'm working on my first flip uh, right now, uh, currently. Um, which, uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because I've talked to multiple people in the real estate industry. I've talked to wholesalers, um, all people who have done this before. Um, and kind of like I was going saying earlier, I uh, asked a lot of questions and gave me the confidence that, you know, I could start doing it myself. Um, so I say they, they're probably a few of the biggest things. Yeah. I want to ask also, as we go forward, you know, the pandemic's over, we're all starting our next cycle in business and, uh, what do you get anxious or do you have anxiety about anything? You know, cause we all have fears and I'm going to start with Nancy because Nancy, you're a creative type. I'm a creative type, but we're always anxious. We always have anxiety, which take ashwagandha gummies. They're illegal. They're really good. They work awesome. I've been taking them. I don't stress as much, but what are some things that scare you or make you anxious as you, as a business owner or as mid you, you used to be a business owner as you now working for someone else. What are some things going forward that, that you, you, a little bit afraid of this oh geez i mean i i think sometimes the things that that scare me the most are the things that you know you don't have any control over like i said i've been in business for 29 years so i've been through 9 11 the recession uh the pandemic right and uh, i mean i remember when 9 11 happened it was like someone turned off a light switch business stopped and it was terrifying you know what are you going to do uh, so for me it's, it's sometimes it's those things that you just don't have any control over that you really are like, what am I going to do if this happens? Um, and I think the answer to it is you need to, you need to be able to adapt really quickly. You need to be able to assess a situation and say, I'm going to try this. I mean, I think if you, you know, put your head in the sand and do nothing, it's going to happen for you. So uh, that is certainly what I've learned over the years is you, you have to make a plan. It may not be the right one, but you've got to think forward and and do something. How about you, Mick? Because I know you've had a business, you've had different jobs, you know, you and you've worked. And now you're you have a position where you're working for someone. It's a smaller company. I mean, it's a good company, but what are some things that you know that sit there and make you a little hesitant or scared? Because you've also gone through a business, you've been in both sides of the avenue. Yeah. So specifically in the business, you know, that I see going on, not just in our business, but out there is um only talking about sales, just things seem to be taking so long, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's what just seems like to me, uh, the sales cycle just seems to be like sometimes go on forever, um, you know, indecision out there, because I think companies are, are worried about what's going on. And um, so, so that's, that's just the only thing outside of our country and and my family. That's probably the only thing I'm worried that that gives me a little bit of anxiety. How about you? How about you, Tyler? Yeah, I mean, I um I don't really have too much anxiety on things. Uh, I try, or at least I try not to. Um, I you know, like Nancy was saying, control the controllables. Um, I kind of try to be in my own world, so like I don't even pay attention too much to the news and stuff. Um, and cause that's outside of my control. I used to be super into the news and everything. And, you know, I would just find myself being pissed off or upset about things that I probably have nothing to do with me <laughs> and probably won't affect me, you know, and if they do affect me, I'll figure it out. So I, um, you know, I try not to have anxiety. I, uh, I'm a healthier guy. Like I try to watch what I eat and exercise and all that stuff. So, um, you know, stress is, is, it can kill you. <laughs> so I, uh, I try to my best to have as little anxiety and stress as, as possible. I mean, it's always going to be there, but, um, but you know, I just do, I, if I know if I'm doing the best I can do, um, and I know that I'm doing the best, then I, I feel like, you know, then I'm giving it my all and, and whatever's going to happen is going to work out. 
Now we we all talk we were talking about networking, and as I said, Tyler, you have two great events. You have Death of the Fox and Barnes and Noble, and they're they're great events. And and I have fun when I go, and I meet new people, and it's good. You know, and sometimes you meet the same old people, but that's always good to see them. I want to ask you, what do you not like? What do you not like about networking? You know, we all have it like, you know, I hate the phonies. And I always say, I hate phony people. I can see through phony people. I don't want to talk to phony people. If you give me my business card, I'm throwing it out if you're a phony person. And also, if you give me a business card, I don't like I don't like the business cards that aren't square. I'm, I think I have a little bit of OCD because they don't stack yeah. right. Like, if you have one of those cards that opens like that, uh, if you put your card on top of that on the pile, then all your other cards fall off. And then if it's circular, it sticks out. And then my wife bitches at me because I have all these business cards on the desk. And she's like, anyway, so what do you, Nancy, what do you not like about networking? What bothers you? And do you, what's your view on uh, business cards that aren't the standard business card? I'm totally with you 100% on the foldovers. I can't stand them for the reason you just said. It just messes up my flow when I take them back, you know, to my office. And I don't like the ones that are, like you said, like those weird square ones. I think my biggest pet peeve about networking or the people that hand you their business card, tell you what they do, and then can't wait to get away from you. Like they don't really want to engage with you. They just want to give out their cards and tell you what they do. And um, and they're, that makes me crazy. Um, the other thing about networking that makes me nuts is when you go somewhere and it's really loud, you know, and you're screaming over loud music or like, you know, they've picked a place that's really not conducive to getting to know people. I, I just, I don't, I won't go back. <laughs> How about you, Mid? you, Mid? You're out a lot. Yeah. A couple of things as far as getting on my nerves. Uh, when you're at a networking event and who, the host or, you know, say it's a chamber event and they, everyone stops networking and they talk forever and ever and ever. <laughs> that drives me because we're there to network. You know, we don't need to know about, you know, everything going on. Uh, that. Or when, if it's one of those kind of networking events where they go around the room and people have to go through their whole, like not just a 10 second commercial, but, you know, a, you know, five minute commercial. So they're, <laughs> they're two of my pet peeves and, and where I stand on the car, business cards. I agree with you. I hate those. And I, and it just drives me crazy if someone doesn't have a business card, not because it matters that much to me, but, but I'm thinking you came here to network. You don't even have any business cards on you. You know, you know I didn't have I didn't have business cards for a while. I'm gonna tell you why. Because whenever you give someone a business card, they email you. They, I, I didn't end up on a mailing list. And I'm like, I, right. if I if I really want someone to connect with someone, I will say, here's my phone number or here's this. But I don't even like picking up the phone. So it's always telemarketers. But well, I, I, I don't, I'm just, thinking of it almost like as if they were my employee. I'd be like, that maybe that's why it's a pet peeve. If they work for me, I'd be like, you went there without business cards. That, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. How about you? How about you, Tyler? Because you run the groups and, and you have to sit there. And, and as I said, your groups are one that it's always pleasurable. No one gives speeches. We don't go around the room. And you're right. It was worse during Zoom when you say do 30 seconds and someone's doing like their MTV Unplugged album. They're doing like a four yeah. hour spoken word. And you're like, you're in banking for Christ's sake. OK, it's 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 common sense. <laughs> but what what is it for you, Tyler, that, that gets you? Yeah, I mean, to to Mid's point, it's why I created my own events is because I was just like, um, you know, I'm going to all these different events and like, what's the part that I don't like about it? Um, and, you know, it's what, what Mid said, the whole presentation and, you know, announcing everybody and blah, 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 blah. The best part's like the first half, you know, when you go to those, these chamber events, the meet the mayor type things, like the best part is like those first hour when you're networking and then it's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I why I created my events is, and did it the way that I did it was because I found that was my, you know, favorite part of it. So I'll just, just do that. Um, so that's, you know, the, the main one. And I'd say the second one is like those super, super salesy guys, which we all kind of just mentioned, you know, they come up to you, they give you the card, they tell you what they do. Um, they ask you what you do and then they go right into how they can help you. Um, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you know, the approach that I kind of take is like getting to know the person, you know, oh, hey, you know, we, you have kids, blah, 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 you know, like, as opposed to just looking at me like I'm like fresh meat or something. Right. Um, so I kind of try to keep those people out of my events. Um, so I'd say they're they're definitely up there too. Can I say one more thing before you, there's, there's one that just, I forgot about. 
and I can't remember the name of the company that prints those business cards for free, but they, if you order business cards for free and you flip them over on the back, they have a little, a little commercial on the back of them. And when someone hands me a card like that, it just says to me, hi, I'm so cheap. I don't even want to spend money on business cards. Right. Well, you know, it's funny <laughs> about business great. cards and, and I'm going to call this company out because I don't care. I got business cards, finally got them and I had them designed ages ago. I got them from Staples. Okay. And now basically it was 1795 for 500, 1995 for a thousand. Who's not getting a thousand? Like who's not spending the $2? But I got them home and I looked through the box and a hundred of them, and I counted, it was actually 106, were not pr printed perfectly. And my wife's like, well, you, you can give them out. I'm like, Joanne, I can't give them out because it looks, there's, even if I just said a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white where it's not cut right. And right. that's irritating. Cause I think, as you said, like the business cards, we said earlier, Tyler, what's your, what's your uh, take on the business cards that go up and down or, or circles or squares? Yeah, like you said, they're annoying, especially cause I do a lot of conferences. So like, you know, I'm doing a week worth of like talking to people kind of in networking. Um, so like, you know, I have a big stack normally in my pocket or in my jacket pocket and uh, yeah, it's just super annoying because then I pull it out and it's like, all do I got one here? Let's say now, nah, see, I made sure they're all normal. See, yeah, <laughs> and I, I always think, I always think when they're circular or square, that people are just trying oh, too hard. The worst. They're trying too hard to like, I'm different. I'm trying yeah. hard to be different. People are just different. Like We're we all young. have our personalities, you know. Like mid, you're mid. Everyone knows you as mid. Everyone knows me as Coop. Everyone knows Nancy. Everyone knows you know, and that's that's your thing. But these people are like, I. I want to prove that I'm different. And you're like, what an asshole. You it's know, working. You know, I mean, how long have calling cards been around for? For years and years. And that's the size they are. We should really just let it be. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I have I have one final question. And then you can tell everyone how you can get in touch with you. But if someone who is like getting out of college right now, you know, 21, 22, 23, 30, 35, depends how long it took you to go to college. What what would be some advice you would give them for getting into the business world in the, the climate we have now? Because we've all come out of the pandemic and college kids, you know, they sort of got screwed. Like they, they didn't get to, they didn't go to, they didn't get to go to dorm. They missed their, you know, graduation, stuff like that. But what was some advice you would give to someone about, just trying to be successful. We'll, we'll start with you, uh, Tyler. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're, I mean, not even if you're just opening a company or in sales, even if you're in marketing or whatever you're in, um, I think building your brand, uh, it's easier now than ever with social medias and, and everything like that platforms um, and just building your brand. And just like you, you know, when it were around the room coop and said, you know, Tyler's Tyler mid's mid. Um, the reason why you're doing that is because we built a brand and, you know, you kind of know who we are more so than just, you know, that employee at NEMR or whatever. Um, so I think, you know, building that brand and it's going to help, you know, whether you're with one company and going to another company or opening your own company, um, they then you're looked at as, you know, people don't know Risk Reduction Plus, right? Like they know Tyler, they, they know Tyler, I'm going to get flood insurance from Tyler. Um, and that's because I've, you know, focused on building my brand. How about you, Nancy? And once again, cause it also not, we're not going to talk brand as much cause you're in marketing, but what was the advice someone, cause you've been, as you said, you've had your business for a long time. So what was some advice you would give to someone? Well, you know, I, my son just started college last year, so he's going into his sophomore year and I'm definitely watching what he's, he's doing. And you're right. I mean, when you come out of college, I remember this myself, you know, I thought I had a lot of knowledge. I really had very little <laughs> And uh, so I think your connections and who you know probably are going to be the thing that you should lean on the most. And I know kids getting out of college probably don't want to lean on their parents, but hello, your parents have lots of connections, years and years of people. Um, and I, I think you have to, you know, that may be how you get your first job, you know, but carrying on on with with people that that may know someone that may that may want to give that kid an extra chance and an extra interview and say you know I don't know them that well you know what they know is basic but you know they I know his dad his dad's a good person I'll give him a shot that's good advice how about you mid yeah, so uh, and Nancy that's a good point like in college I told my daughter this whether or not she listened or not I have no idea but you know you go to you go to a college she happens to go to Drexel, use it, 
get to know the professors, get to know your classmates, because they're going to be people that you network with for years to come. You know, because if not, you could you can learn accounting. You can you can learn accounting online and never interact with people. The whole reason to go to certain schools is to you know build that network, I think, because um, the material is the same no matter where you go. But outside of that, when it comes to, say, your 20s and 30s, pick your pick your company, pick your boss on what you're going to learn, not what you're going to make, but what you're going to learn, not just the job itself, but ways of doing things as best you can pick them for what you're going to learn, because you'll have a lot more earning potential later, you know, in your 30s and 40s is when you're going to probably earn or have the biggest increases in income, not in your 20s, and probably not in your early 30s. So the more, the more you can learn during those, you could, you could make up for it tenfold in your 40s and 50s and 60s, if you do it right, you know, learning as much as you can in your, in your 20s and early 30s. That's my opinion. Well, that's awesome. You know, I, I want to thank you all for coming on today. Um, everyone, we're, we're going to get a picture after. But uh, everyone, how can people get in touch with you? Just give If you want to say your email or if you just want to say, you know, find me on, on LinkedIn. Nancy, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, I'd say the best way would be uh, to visit the website. It's uh, makefirstimpressions.com. Okay. How about you, Mid? So active on LinkedIn, Emilio Mariani. And uh, my email is emariani at nemrhr.com and you tyler yeah i'd say just social media um linkedin facebook instagram uh e tyler ardrin my instagram's uh e ardrin well that's great so people also you can email me at the coop tank at yahoo.com go to the new thanks to joe and jemmy the best producer in town help me set up my youtube channel so go to the coop tank youtube channel it just popped up yesterday you can like you can subscribe you can see this one, you can see the last one. You can also go to my website. Uh, you can go to the cooptank.podbean.com, Spotify, Amazon Music. You can find over uh, 40 episodes now of the Coop Tank or go to coopertalk.net where you can find my entertainment uh, podcast. So anyway, I'm going to thank Joe Ganjami. I'm going to thank Sweet Recording. Please check out Sweet Recording, S-U-I-T-E, recording.com. I'm Steve Cooper, and you all have a great weekend.